watchword for today is from Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. Did you know that you have a friend in high places? As our watchword for the week reminds us, you, whoever you are, have a high priest in the old language, an advocate, a defender, a friend, and that friend is Jesus. Hi, I'm Pastor Dave Geyer, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this, the weekly online worship offering of the Janaden Hutton, Fry's Valley, and Uricksville Moravian congregations. And whatever has led you to this space, we're so happy you're sharing with us in it. This is the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. And those who would normally be gathering for worship in person in our area are instead gathering at Old Shunbrun Village for the Moravian Day of Service. In this, our online worship offering, we offer a special welcome to the Reverend Denny Roan, who will be assisting in leading our service today and will be offering us our message, which he has entitled, What Would You Do? And we offer our thanks to Denny for his help today. There is one announcement I'd like to highlight for elementary aged kids and their caregivers. Starting two weeks from today on Sunday, October 24th at four o'clock Eastern time and lasting about a half hour, we will be launching Sunday School Faith Foundation. This is our effort at a joint hybrid Sunday school targeted for kids in elementary school. Now, we would welcome any elementary aged kids to participate. You don't have to be members. You don't have to be in our immediate area. Kids can participate through Zoom or can participate in person at the digital classroom at Janaden Hutton Moravian Church. Now kids, you can hear more about this in our children's message that is coming a bit later in the service. But adults, the thing I need to emphasize for you is that we do need you to register those children that you would like to participate. There are materials that go with this. We'll get them to you, but we need to hear from you. And so to register, please contact our church office in the contact information below to sign any kids that you would like to participate in this joint Sunday school effort. And we're looking forward to getting together for Sunday school. And now as our worship continues, let us quiet our hearts as Denny leads us in our opening prayer. Could we bow together in prayer? Creator, sustainer, redeemer, God, we are in different places this morning, but our hearts are united as we turn to you. It is our prayer that you hear our worship, for we come to you as your children in need of your grace. We ask in Jesus' name, amen.
Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 through 16. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joins from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart, and before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is, a, is, who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The reading is from Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 31. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandment, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing, go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven, then come follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or field for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in, the, in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Good morning. As we think about those that we love, and the earth that we live on, and everything happening at this time, let us bring the power of prayer and intention to these experiences. Lord, Find what we've hidden, heal what we've hurt, open what we've closed, teach what we wouldn't learn, fill the places we've emptied, and empty what consumes us, release what we've captured, hold what escapes us, invade what we defend, and defend what we've surrounded. Please join me in the saying of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hi, now is the time for a message for all God's children. And today it's for the kids. Um, we have an exciting announcement. We will be starting children's programming again. 
Um, it will begin on Sunday, October 24th at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It will be a hybrid program, meaning it'll be in our digital classroom, which I'm sitting in now, and also be on Zoom live again at 4 o'clock on Sundays. The program is called People Jesus Met, and it looks so fun. So ask your adults to call the church office or email us to get you registered. We'll get your boxes in the mail so that you can have all of your supplies and everything you need to join us. I hope to see everybody there, and let's bow with prayer. Dear Jesus, Thank you for leading us to children's programming. We're so excited to see the kids and interact with the kids and begin learning and teaching about what Jesus has to offer and to teach and to be thankful for. Watch over everybody and keep them safe and keep them well. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hope to see you soon. A reminder of a portion of our gospel lesson from this morning. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. He said to him, teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing, go. Sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving for he had many possessions. Interesting account, isn't it? We may know the same story as the rich young ruler who comes to Jesus and asks, what must I do, just like this man. We don't really know the answer. He doesn't say, okay, or I can't do that. He grieves and he leaves. So in my optimistic brain, he comes to his senses and he does what he's asked. But I think there's a lesson for us today in this passage. For the Jews, obeying the Ten Commandments is what would make one right in the sight of God and thus give them eternal life. So obviously, this young man has heard other things be said and just wonders, what else do I have to do to have that guarantee? What Jesus asks him to do is to change his focus. The commandments that I read in that passage are known as the lesser commandments. They're known as the lesser commandments because Jesus gives to others that 
are referred to as the greatest commandments. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Didn't he say this is the greatest commandment? That's what's missing in this young man. He's done all the right things, but he's highlighted himself. The commandments that Jesus lists are all about taking care of the other, not taking care of yourself. Honor your father and your mother. Do not steal. Well, you're taking somebody else's possessions. Do not commit adultery. You're taking somebody else's love. Do not covet. You want what somebody else has. Jesus pushes this young man to self-examine and see what is the highest priority in his life. I went to a workshop one time, a stewardship workshop, and heard the leader say something quite interesting. If you want to know your highest priority, look no further than your checkbook. It's an interesting statement, isn't it? Look no further than your checkbook. So if we look at our checkbook, if we're in the process of buying a home, that's usually the largest check, isn't it? And we will justify that by saying, well, we need a place to live. For me, it's not a house, it's my car. Do I need a car like that? No. But I have it. Why? A lot of people are asking that question. And I guess my answer is because I can. But if you look in my checkbook, there's a lot more cash that goes to other people than goes towards that car. Now, I'm not holding me up as a shining example because I'm not. I'm human, just like everybody else. I have my share of mistakes and things that I like to keep quiet, but what Jesus is calling us to do is to think about the others and share what we have with others. Jesus is saying, it isn't all about you. It isn't all about me. It's about how we respond to God's grace. If you couple this passage with the epistle lesson, what we find out is we cannot, on our own, earn our salvation. Our salvation is already a given. We received it on a Friday, about three o'clock, and we call it Good Friday, when Jesus died on the cross. And that gift of grace was sealed three days later on Easter Sunday when he rose from the dead, thus giving us eternal life through faith in what has been accomplished for us. And the call that goes with that is to do for others. And to do for others frequently before we do for ourselves. Christianity Today ran an article about someone we should all be familiar with when I say the name, and his name was Nicholas Ludwig von Zinzendorf, who in the minds of many is the, the father of the renewed Moravian church. Well, what did he do? He provided land for refugees, religious refugees, to build a community. He became a Lutheran pastor so he could better care for them. On August the 13th, he provided them a meal so that they could continue to pray together and discern what it is God was calling them to do. He bought a ship so that they could go to their mission. And then at the end of this story, the statement exists that Zinzendorf 
was the rich young ruler that said yes and used his position and his resources to spread the good news of Jesus Christ in the places where no one else would go, to Greenland, to America, to the Native Americans, to Nicaragua, to Honduras, to the East West Indies, to South Africa, Ghana, Tanzania. We're not expected to do that level. Why? We don't have that level of resources. God does not ask us to give what we don't have. He asks us to evaluate how we're using what we do have. And in the end, what is going to give us eternal life is what Jesus said. Then come, follow me. It wasn't enough just to sell what he owned and give the money to the poor. That wouldn't get him what he wanted. But what would get him what he wanted is to follow Jesus. The next portion of the gospel lesson comes the phrase that we all have heard. It's going to be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to get into heaven. That's not cursing wealth. It's saying that when wealth becomes the object, God is pushed out of the scene. And so we have to be careful and make sure that Christ and him crucified remains our profession of faith. Think about the others. It's not all about me. And the use of my freedom impacts everybody around me. So the thought should be for the other. Please bow with me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, again, you, you pull us up short and you ask us to re-examine ourselves spiritually to make sure that we have put you as the priority, that our goal is to follow you and that the resources that we have are at your disposal, not ours. So dear Lord, as we journey into this next week, may we feel your blessing and your presence and may we be open to your guidance so that we can elevate the care of the other before the care of ourselves. In your name we pray. Amen. Now may the love of God the Father, the salvation which faith in Christ may bring, the presence and power of the indwelling of God's Holy Spirit be before you to lead you, behind you to guide you, beneath you to uphold you, above you to bless you, around you to protect you, within you to caress you. In the name of the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen.